Shalom. Most High Christ blessed. This is Raleigh, and we had Juneteenth, and it's the first edition of Cuts from the Street. Who we got? Hey, Shalom, Israel, Captain Josiah. Officer Issachar. Officer Seer. Officer Nahum. Officer Ezekiah. Officer Ray Uel. Yeah, and this is Officer Abraham right here. So, hey, we got a lot of interviews coming up. We're coming out to show our people what's going on with Juneteenth, let them know that they're not free. Okay, and that we have to come back to God's commandments. So stay tuned for much more to come. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Now, uh, Shabu, why are you out here today? Because it's Emancipation Day. It's Emancipation Day, okay, okay. So Ebony, can you tell us a little bit about what we're doing out here with Juneteenth? What is Juneteenth about? We're celebrating black liberation. We're celebrating black justice. We're celebrating the African American culture and the heritage. Okay, black liberation, black justice, and black heritage, right? Yeah. So why are you out here, Adonaya? Well, it's a time to be with our brothers and sisters and unite in something positive. It's, it's a blessing to be, like how it says, how good and how pleasant it is for blood, brothers to dwell together in unity. And right now it's all about coming together in unity. Okay, okay, so can you tell me a little bit about the Juneteenth? Like, what is it about? So Juneteenth is a celebration that started in Galveston, Texas. When 1865, the people there heard about uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, which was two years after uh, President Lincoln gave the uh, order. Okay, all right, that's good, that's good. Well, Juneteenth is about celebrating the freedom of African Americans from white supremacy. I think the Juneteenth is really important because African Americans and their political conscious, Israelites, lost sons of Jacobs in our political consciousness, we're taught to think that our um, political rights come from the nonviolent struggle of the 1960s with Martin Luther King, when in actuality they come from the militant actions of black Civil War soldiers. And so we're taught to associate it with our victimization in the 60s instead of the, the war and sacrifice that any nationality nationality needs okay so hey it's a lot right there you dropped a lot of history on people so talking about like freedom so to speak um and you said from white supremacy am i correct now today as a people so-called black people and Hispanics, native americans are we truly free from white supremacy oh well i mean we're we've been emancipated but we're not free the freedom starts in the mind liberation starts in the mind um and what we're working towards is for white folks to be free of their white supremacy. Okay, now that's good. That was going to be my next question. I was about to ask if you think we're free. You think you can elaborate just a little bit more on that for me? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a legal system that uh, is not designed for African Americans, not designed for us. Uh, we are living in a system of slavery even now. They just keep switching what it looks like. So when we look at who is incarcerated, and that is a literal uh, imprisonment, um, it's mostly our people, black and brown folks, particularly our men. And so they still have us working slave wages, building this country um, off the backs of our people. You're saying a lot of heavy points there. You're saying a lot of heavy points there. So here's my next question. How do, since you, we are emancipated, how do we achieve true freedom? Yeah, see, I, it's crazy because I don't really think, uh, I don't think anybody's really ever free of anything as, okay. as a human. You're always, you're going to be a slave to something, right? Okay. Whether it be money, whether it be, you know, your own fears, yes, whether it be actual, you know, somebody is exploiting you and not paying you shit, yeah, which it doesn't even have to be what most people think of slavery. I could tell you, you know, off the top of my head, a bunch of different examples of modern day slavery. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like... Can, can I get one? Uh, just for the audience so we can edify oh, sure. What's a modern day the slavery? The prison system. Ooh. You got companies that are making, they're making stuff for like fractions of the penny. Oh. And they're being created by these big, big prisons uh -huh. that are usually run by uh, they're sort of corporate entities, but they're shareholders. There's a lot of rich people that invest in this big prison in the middle of nowhere. And guess what you got to do? Fill that up. Yeah. So you're going to find people, get them for weed, get them for outstanding warrants, whatever. Fill it up. They get their money. It's worth way more money than they invested in. But guess what? Now another company, because you and I used to go to Harvard. Yeah. Now you can get a contract where what do you make? T-shirts? These film crew T-shirts. Guess what, man? Let me get that contract. I'm going to put you in touch with so-and-so. And guess what? Now the prisoners at my prison are making these shirts 100 times faster, 100 times cheaper. I'm not paying them anything. They have to be there because they're in prison for weed charge. What does it matter? To charge the Jew, it doesn't matter. They're making that. They're not getting any compensation. They don't get stock. They don't get for every, let's say you did just a 10-year bid. Let's say you created with your hands $20,000 for my company. 
I'm not gonna give you any money. When you get out of prison, I'm not even gonna give you a job. Yeah. I'm gonna be like, no, we're sorry, man. We're not hiring right now. That's modern day slavery. Hey, I agree. I, I, I agree. Uh, let's get closer. A lot of money. That's the thing. <laughs> okay, so let me ask a question. When you say we are free, yeah. do you mean are we physically free or you mean mentally free? Which one are you, what do you think? Well, when you look right out here. Now, right now, it's a perception of freedom, actually, that I was speaking of. When, we, when true freedom is being in, I, how would I put it, God's divine motion. That everything we're doing is a part of his plan. Everything we're doing is refle a reflection of him and his creation. Right now, I don't see that. I on only see it in sparks and in different individuals, you know what I mean, who are choosing to do the right thing. But yes, right here is today is just, I feel like personally, it's just to gather people and have something positive for us to come together. Even if, you know, how would I say, all together, we know the truth. So, from looking out here, a lot of people think that Juneteenth, a lot of people think we are free. So, like you said, if we were free, we would be able to pass our own laws or make our own, have our own money and things like that. As a people, do we have that? <laughs> now, so, someone, someone once asked, said this, and it made perfect sense. There's two kinds of freedom, two kinds of freedom. There's freedom to and there's freedom from. So which one do you think we are? <laughs> right now we have a mixture of both, but it's not in the right perspective. You know, right now we're, we're free, but we're, we're free from our, the knowledge of our God. We're free from the knowledge of who we are. We're free from our proper perspective and our proper self and our proper mentality. You know, and we're also free to do wild things and, you know, free to break the laws and commandments, which is hurting us. You know what I mean? So in this perspective, yes, we are free, but that word's been used a little too loosely. You know, we should be striving to be in God's perfect peace. And, and, and what is God's perfect peace? Woo. His perfect peace is the harmony that, that is produced by us living according to his laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments. So, according to you, in order to get to God's perfect peace, we have to keep the law, statute, and commandments. Is that correct? 100% correct, yes. Okay. Shalom, Israel. Uh, IUIC Cuts from the Streets, Raleigh edition. We out here with? India. Kellyana. Ari Webb. Ari. All right, we out here with a family. Uh, what are we out here to celebrate today? The Juneteenth celebration. Right, you Juneteenth, yes. Juneteenth. Juneteenth. All right, so my first question is, what is Juneteenth about? Because I don't really know about Juneteenth. I would say that it is about um, recognizing um, from years ago what they had to go through, what people had to go through, black people had to go through, and um, almost like a celebration for where we have come now. That's what I would say. I think it is also the celebration of like, you know, how far we've come and how far we have to go in order to get what we want. Y'all little brothers got something? Do you know you know why we're here for Juneteenth? Uh, Juneteenth, you know? To celebrate the freedom of black, um, uh, for African American people. Okay, I like that. You agree? Yes, the, uh, to celebrate all the African Americans that, that became free. Okay, okay so they, they're free today, all right? So my next question is, uh, since we own our own businesses today, right, do you guys consider that freedom because we have our own businesses? I do consider it to a certain extent, just depending on um, the types of businesses and I guess the funding, too, where it comes from. That depends on. Okay. Would you like to elaborate on the businesses? Um, yeah. I feel like we're free to it, like she said, to a certain extent. We still have, you know, we're being whitewashed. Black businesses are being whitewashed. So until we're not being whitewashed, I still feel like we're being, you know, shackled and held down and oppressed. Okay, so you so you think we should have we should be segregated, so not 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 together, but have our own businesses. Um, or should we should we join with them with our businesses, or should we have our own businesses? I, I think it should be like a a combination of both. Like we shouldn't have to be oppressed in order to. I don't know how to explain it. Like we should be together, but we should also be able to express ourselves in the way we want to express ourselves. Okay, I could agree. I could agree. A, a young man. So about businesses, do you like that we have our own businesses? Yes. Would you ever want to have your own business? Yes. What kind of business? Um, not sure. 
Not sure yet? All right. So here in Juteef, um, Black Liberty, let's start with Liberty. Uh, explain that a little bit for the people watching. What does it mean, Black Liberty? Black Liberty means that we have the ownership of our heritage, the ownership of our culture, the ownership of our future here in America, here across the world. Okay, so here in America, here across the world. Okay, so Juneteenth for you. How does that? How, how many Juneteenths have you been to? Um, this is my first Juneteenth in Durham. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All praise. All praise. So we're out here and we're trying to show our people the truth uh, about slavery and what's happened in our heritage, like you said, and about liberation. Now you've seen the state of our people recently in the news, right? Yes. Would you consider us as a people? Uh, you know, we, we march for uh, equal rights. There's still some injustices. You know, Central Park Five, they just did a documentary. You seen that? Yeah, I did. Uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, when, they, when they see us? When they see us. Yeah. So are we truly a free and liberated people based on all this evidence uh, out in the media, you got movies, are we still a free and liberated people? I don't think we're free and liberated people, but I don't think anybody is. Okay, so you said we, you don't think we are, but probably not anybody. No. So if we have Juneteenth, which is a celebration of freedom from slavery, the Emancipation Proclamation, correct? But we are not technically a free people. Are we? Uh, well, I'll ask you that question. Are we a free people spiritually or physically? No. Neither? No. So we are neither free people physically or spiritually? I think if we think about the holistic idea of freedom and I would say no, we are not, we are not free people. But I do think that there's still importance in celebrating things like this and the, the accomplishments that folks have made in the past to get us to where we are today, but we're still not free and there's still fighting to do. Right, right. So do you think like an event like this, does this kind of mask some of the things going on with our people? Does it distract us from the problems we're having at, that are contrary to freedom, like the uh, like prison systems? Do you think this kind of masks that or what, what's your thoughts on that? No, I think that it gives us an opportunity to recognize those things. So like if you go down, I hear from y'all and I see this ten this this table across from me that talk about lynchings. Like I think there are parts of our history that we don't want to mask and these are opportunities to showcase that and show our history, um, both the dark side of it, but also the entrepreneurs, the business folks, the, the, the powerful people in our history. Um, I think it's important to show the young people, but also older people, that whole history. So I don't think it's masked here, but I, and I think it's actually to some extent elevated here and we talk about it. Okay, good, good, good. So you, you spoke about the lynchings and uh, yeah. at the, the booth over there and the booth where we have yeah. like showing the history of slavery. Yeah. Do you think all black people talk about that history or do some of them hide it? Um, I don't think we always talk about it because oftentimes it's not taught to us. It's not passed down to us. Um, we don't get that history. Um, and oftentimes I think it's through that oral storytelling that has been so like in, in, so important in like our history and carrying out that culture that has been lost over generations. And so I think unfortunately for those that are not sharing that history, sharing those stories, it's because we're losing that, that form of oral storytelling that has been so prevalent and, and, and super important to how we share stories about our culture. That's an excellent point. Yeah. We don't talk to each other anymore. It's all dictated to us what we think. That's, yeah. That's an excellent point. Now, let me ask you a question. You mentioned physically and spiritually, and possibly mentally, we're still in slavery, right? Yes. So what would be a solution? What comes to your mind as a solution for that physical, mental, and spiritual slavery that we're still in today? If, if Juneteenth hasn't fixed it, what are some solutions that would help us come out of this captivity we're in? Promote black empowerment. Uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that Dr. Martin Luther King, on his last speech, that's what he talked about, the, how vital uh, black empowerment was in our country. And that's the only way we're going to ever get true justice and, and, unless we strengthen our institutions and, and build each other up. Uh, just like he started his uh, movement with the uh, Montgomery uh, bus um, boy boycott, right. which they call economic withdrawal, and at the same time, he, he encouraged black people in his final speech that we needed to strengthen our own institutions. He mentioned insurance. He mentioned banking. He mentioned uh, uh, boycotting uh, 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 stores that don't treat us fairly and, give us, uh, and don't give us a fair treatment and fair employment. So we need to just embrace the message that Dr. Martin Luther King left us with. There was not a whole lot of difference between what Dr. Martin Luther King was saying and what Malcolm X was saying. 
So let me ask you this. The the event Juneteenth in particular, what does this event specifically represent? Well, the Juneteenth, uh, that represents the, uh, in, in, in June 19, 1865, when the, when the Union soldiers rode into Texas to free the last slaves. Technically, slavery ended with the Emancipation Proclamation uh, on January 1st, 1863. But of course, the Civil War was still going on. Of course, there were a lot of blacks that were still held in captivity. But, but after the Civil War ended with uh, when uh, uh, Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses Grant, and then of course, there were still slaves being held. And of course, the last group that was, that was emancipated was in, in, in Texas in, in June 19, 1865. So let me ask you this. So, like you said, the Emancipation Proclamation was, uh, Proclamation was in 1863. Right. Now, the, the, the slaves in Texas weren't freed until 1865. Exactly right. So what are we saying there? The message didn't get down them, to them until two years later? Well, actually, that is true. The message didn't, didn't get to them. Uh, well, actually, what I'm saying is, but see, keep in mind now that the Civil War uh, started, in, um, started before 1860, started in 1861. But, it, but Abraham Lincoln, uh, he, he, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation in January 1st of 1863. Uh, and basically what it does, it freed all of the, states, the slaves that were in states that were, um, that, that, that were in, in rebellion against the, the, the United States government. Okay. But of course now, during the Civil War, now the slaves were still held in captivity because cause the South hadn't been defeated and they hadn't given up. But even after they had given up, had surrendered up in April of 1865, uh, there were still slaves being held, and of course the last ones to be free were down in uh, were down in Texas. Right, right. Okay, understood that. So now, what dictates the freedom of slaves? Like, how do we how do we say definitely? Okay, you're emancipated, emancipated. Now you're completely free. How do we? What dictate those terms? Well, really, I don't think we are completely free. Because we have a lot of people that their minds are still in captivity. They still have a slave mentality. A lot of people don't understand that we have a lot of opportunities uh, right here in this country that we can take advantage of and we are not taking advantage of. A lot of people do not understand that when you talk about the Bible, you're talking about the history of black people. If you look at it, I go all the way back to Genesis, all the way up to the New Testament, we were talking about black people. Uh, a lot of people, we don't realize that we are the Hebrews that we are the Hebrews that they talk about in the Bible. And just like uh, Joseph, the story about Joseph being held in captivity, well, we are Joseph, white here in America. We are Joseph, we were sold, sold in the cap. You know, it's ironic that your name is actually Joseph too. Right, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but, but, but we are Joseph, we are Joseph. And of course, and that's, and that's speaking uh, figuratively or metaphorically, uh, so to speak. We are Joseph, we were sold in the captivity by our African brothers, and of course, and we are still here, but the reason we have not uh, emerged the way Joseph did, because we do not realize who we are. Okay. Once we figure out who we are, uh, that's when we're gonna have true freedom. I think when I will be truly free is when I'm no longer defined by my race, no longer defined by my gender, my economic status, my geographical location. Um, you know, because we are all spirit, right? We were put here on this earth by the Creator as spirit. Um, race is a construct. Age, ageism, sexism, you know, those are all constructs to serve white supremacy, male patriarchy. Okay, okay. Now, I have a few uh, things that I want to bring out also. So if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I can bring out something out of the Bible. You don't mind if I read the Bible? Come here real quick, man. All right, so um, what I want to give first is Deuteronomy 28. Now, inside the Bible, it mentions a lot of, a lot of different things. Uh, but one of the main things that it talks about is a certain group of people who goes through a lot of atrocities, and we got to figure out who that is. I want to show you something. Deuteronomy 28, uh, give me verse 15 first. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Now, when I read it, I'm going to ask you a question or two about it also, okay? But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, what do you think that's saying so far? Pretty much, if you don't do what God says, uh, you're going to have a rough road. You're going to have a rough road. That's it. That's, that's the way to say it. 
Now, watch this. I'm going to go right to what you said about the freedom. Give me verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. Now, it says, therefore the people that had to keep his commandments had to serve their enemies. Right? Let's figure out who this is. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Now, I'm going to pause there. So, who serves another nation of people for food, water, and clothes that you have to be on your back? Who does that? I would say our people fall into that category. We fall into that category, right? So, it says at the beginning of the verse, read it again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. So, who would that person be that we have to serve for? Um, white supremacist culture. Now, is it just the whites? I, mean, I would say anyone society who is benefiting off of white supremacy, benefiting off of racism, the oppression of one people for the gain of a few, um, are part of the enemy. Okay, all right. Yeah, because it does go towards every other nation outside of ours. Now watch this. Uh, read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now, check that out. It says that same enemy will put yokes of iron on our neck until we have destroyed. Now, that until is the reason why everybody's out here today. The Emancipation Proclamation, which about, what, two, three years afterwards fully came all the way through to Texas, like what you was mentioning, Juneteenth. But it says, until he have destroyed thee. What was destroyed from our minds as a people? What was destroyed from our minds as a people? I think the very fact that we already are liberated. Hmm. The fact that we already are liberated. By the by the sense of, by the righteousness of our birth. You know, because of our humanity, because we are God's people, we are naturally free. Under law we are enslaved. But we as you know, I mean I, I mean I don't necessarily believe that the white man's law that I'm under its jurisdiction. I mean, that's why we're out here fighting, out here protesting, out here marching, because we are, you know, we're fighting for that liberation to be realized in our lifetime. Well, you know, uh, in engagement in this society is, has made us subject the inferiority complexes and subordinated impulses. So even were we allowed to have free reign with um, with our with our actions, we still perhaps would not be free. Um, if one looks at like emancipation, emancipation means the relief release from one's possession, but not from one's control. It has the root man kipper, the same word we get grip and grapple from. And so emancipate means you let them out your grip, but you don't let them out your control. So Solomon, what you're saying is we really aren't free because we're emancipated. I'm saying I'm free, but you know I mean it's a science to my freedom, and most people ain't on it. So, so you're free. But most people aren't on it, meaning the rest of us are where? Where are the rest of the people? I won't say, I can't speak for the rest of us. I'll just say that. The majority then, the majority. The majority of freedom are not operating in ways that will lend themselves to absolute freedom. The majority of people are not operating in ways that will lend themselves to absolute freedom. So they're still in? True freedom come from the most high. Only. Okay. And that's a true statement. That's a true statement. So while the rest of the people are not free, some people are being freed. Is that more of a, a, a spiritual thing I believe you're talking about, right, Solomon? Um, it's a spiritual thing that has mental and material manifestations. Okay, so let's talk about something else. Let's talk about when we talk about Juneteenth. Everybody sees this as a celebration of the victory, like we, we, we've been freed from slavery. But you just spit a bunch of knowledge that we're not free from slavery. So is this celebration masking the problems that are still going on with white supremacy? Is it still hiding the problems where we're still incarcerated at a higher rate? where children are being sold to prisons. Is that being hidden by this celebration? Or what's your thoughts on that? Um, I don't think it's being hidden by the celebration. I think the celebration has been misdirected from its original purpose in that Juneteenth was originally the cel a celebration of the actions of African-American Civil War veterans. The fact that, black, that the North was losing the Civil War, the emancipation sign, Africans, African-Americans, Israelites, Join the Northern Army. They bring native intelligence from the South. Plus, they did not a South. They let the South they let their labor. The war is over in six months. It's obvious that the Civil War was won by black soldiers, and that the foundation of American democracy is black militancy. 
This celebration is originally a celebration of that. So what have they turned it into? They've turned it into a celebration of, and it still is, it's when people finally got the information that they people had made war on their oppressors and had won. And so, you know, this is originally a celebration of the victory of African American Civil War veterans. But is it is it still that way across the world today? Well, I think this place is segregated because they know not to come amongst us right now with that shit. Okay, okay. So, on that note, speaking of segre segregation, are all people created equal? Because they, they had that put on the Constitution before we were had the right to be so. Do you believe in the eyes of the God, of the Most High God, where all people created equal? Well, equality is a mathematical concept that's quantitative. Um, our life, in existence, and an environment is based on equilibrium, which is a balancing of differences. You can't find two blades of grass that's the same, much less two people that are equal. I think that um, the first lie that white people told us was that we were inferior, and then the next lie they told us was that we was equal, when the whole time we better than that. Okay, so long story short, because you said a lot, but it, to, to break it down on a simple term, you're saying, we would be superior. Is that what you're saying? I mean, it ain't simple as that, though, because we all know our baseline. We all know our our lowest common denominator. What is our apex point? What is our highest exclusive numerator? You know, what I mean, Christ said, "Be ye also per and be ye perfect, even and be ye also perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect." Is the perfect man the same as the imperfect man? Emphatically, no, Cipher. Emphatically, no. And so, the standards by which we are better need be clearly articulated before we assert our being the best. Okay. You throw, hey, there's some heavy words you're throwing at me. There's some heavy words you're throwing at me. I'm trying to hang with you. I'm with oh, you. I'm trying it's, to... it's just the King's English. The King's English? Okay, okay, my brother. So let me ask you a question. You celebrate the 4th of July? Um, huh. It's a very interesting thing. A lot of people don't know this, but three of the first four presidents died on the 4th of July. It represents a nationalist sacrifice, and so yeah, I represent. Yeah, I celebrate the deaths of my enemies. So you do celebrate Fourth of July, do you? Like, as far as what? The same way I separate Juneteenth as the victory of my ancestors over their oppressors. I celebrate Fourth of July as the death of particular ancestors that my ancestors warred against. So are you doing the fireworks and the, the cookouts? Bro, if I see the, like I said. It's a question of what you celebrating. We can't control what the sun, moon, and stars do. These astrological conjunctions and alignments that people choose to make their national holidays on have importance that are far beyond the day that they made a holiday. The question is, when these conjunctions occur and there is power in them that's evidenced in the society, how are we understanding it, engaging it, and orienting so that we can pull the best out of it? And so instead of celebrating the victory of the Founding Fathers, I celebrate the death of the Founding Fathers. Okay. Woo! Hey, you, you a wordsmith. You throwing a lot out there. Hey, I appreciate, I appreciate your knowledge you dropping. So you do celebrate 4th. So outside of the 4th of July, you celebrate any other holidays like uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter? Um, Thanksgiving is the first um, full moon, is the, is the harvest moon that comes after um, the fall equinox. And so, like I said, these people, you celebrate that? I would not give people who enslaved Israelites for 500 years the ability to have control over a conjunction in the sky of celestial bodies that were in existence long before them or us. And so, when you be like, do I celebrate that day? Um, it's like, you know what I mean, does the Bible say celebrate new moon festivals? Indeed, indeed it does. Is Thanksgiving a new moon festival? I'm not I'm not entirely certain on that one. The harvest moon. I'm not entirely certain it on that one. It's the harvest moon that celebrates the um, fall harvest, just like... So do you do the, the, the trimmings, the turkey, the, the gathering with your family? My point is, we need to understand these things as greater than our oppressors label that they put on it for a capital enterprise. So you're saying rebrand re, re it, so to speak, and take it back? No, um, the, the brand is the fact that it's its existence. Let there be light. You know, I mean, they're using conjunctions of celestial bodies to put together holidays to cement their nationalism in the consciousness of the people. You know, what I mean, so it's branding, but it's bigger than branding in that the celestial is greater than the terrestrial. I'm just curious. How about Christmas? Oh, say what? I'm, I'm just curious. Do you do Christmas as well? The same way? Um, 
like I said, for me, these things are astrological phenomena. They're not holi they're holy days in the sense that they represent the proper working of God's creation. I don't so, see like the holidays. I, I don't see them as national holy days. I see them as holy days because they represent celestial phenomena in conjunction and in alignment. Okay. So today, are we truly free as a people? So. No, I would say no. There's that. That's a. That's a. There's multi levels and layers, and and that's a deep question. Um, so like physically, I can. I don't have chains on me, right? I can walk around here. I could. I drove myself down here. We we can walk through. There's not a sign on the building that tells me that where I can and can't go. Um, but 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 it's it's multiple levels. So there, we we don't live in equitable situations. Black folks don't technically um, own enough things and have enough autonomy and have enough. Um, I, I, I guess so. So of course you hear everybody say mentally we're enslaved because I'm, we're, we're not empowered enough to really break down the system of white supremacy that keeps us feeling like we can't achieve certain things and do certain things and put an end to certain things. Um, so one thing that I love about Durham is because I feel like Durham does have the numbers to put an end to some of the things that we deal with and some of the things that we don't have to do with. I love Durham because um, we do have more choices and more options. For example, like my daycare black owned, my house is black owned, my gym is black owned, <laughs> I got my car from a black person, black people work on my car, my hair, my nail, you know, we can make those choices. And so I think that's that's one of the reasons why I love Durham because we have those opportunities. But I do um, know that we need to empower one another more to do more and be more and create more equitable um, opportunities. Right, I'm glad you said that. Now, um, why do we actually go into slavery? Any idea? Why do we go into slavery as a nation of people? Scripturally, and that's the only thing we're building on, scripturally, um, you would say according to Deuter Deuteronomy, um, scripturally, anytime you deviate from the will of the Most High, you get, you get things happen. However, however, we can't ignore the evil of the European slave traders either. Because the thing is, people ask, well, why did things happen? You know, if you are perfect, things aren't supposed to happen. But if there's a wobble in your 360, things happen. But at the same time, like I said, we can never let the European off the hook for what they did. Okay. Well, I'll give you a scripture. It is meat for things to come, to paraphrase. But woe to them through who it comes. So we can't deny those from who our bondage came from. Whether the Most High did it or not, those through who it came are still going to be judged. Okay. So how would you say we are to truly get out of bondage mentally, physically, financially? How are we truly to get out of the conditions that we're in today? As far as scripturally, it all goes down to your spirituality and as a black messiah, uh, we believe our motto is stop waiting for a savior and be one. Stop waiting for a savior and be one. Because Yahshua said you will do these works if you believe. Keyword, if you believe, you will do these works and greater works you shall do. That's why our motto is stop waiting for a savior and be one based on that. So that's the, that's the answer. So that means it must begin with each individual, right? Well, if the scriptures teach us that the kingdom of heaven is within you, yeah. Absolutely. I like that you said that. So being that the scripture says the kingdom is within us, what well, must... Within your midst, however you want to uh, say it. Some say within you, some say within your midst, however way you want to interpret it. Okay, so what, what must we begin to implement in our lives to have the physical manifestation of the kingdom come forth on earth? What do we have to do? According to the scriptures, whether you embrace it or not. See, that's two questions. Because a lot of times the thing is... How do I put it? People get confused with what I personally do and what the scriptures say. Now, if you go by the scriptures, the scriptures teach that if you obey the laws and statutes of the Most High, that's the key. Now, whether I do all of that or not, that has nothing to do with what the scriptures teach. But to answer your question in the most sincere way, the script, if you go by the scriptures, the scriptures teach, and that's what we go by, by obeying the laws and statutes of the Most High. So that leads me to my next question. How do we return unto God? <laughs> you got it.
So let me, let me get a scripture. Which one? Deuteronomy 10 and 12. So we're going to see how to turn back to God, to be in his perfect peace, like you said, right? Because the answer was actually correct. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So it's things that required of us from the Most High God. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. So the first thing we have to do is to fear him, right? Read. To walk in all his ways and to love him. So in order to walk in his ways and to love him, 1 John 5 and 3 is to do what? So you know what I'm about to say, right? So let's get it out of the book because it's going to answer your question. Read. This is the book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God, which you said we need out here to bring our people together. Let's see what it is. That we keep his commandments. So if our people, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, keep the commandments, we will be in that perfect peace that you was talking about. That's right. So do we see that out here today? No. So because we don't see that out here, according to the Bible, we are still a cursed people. So if we broke the commandments and we're cursed, the way to get out of that curse is to do what? Is to follow, is back to, is basically to follow what God put set right here in this book right here for us. And what are they called? It's one word. It's called the what? <laughs> the commandments. All praise to the most high. Hey, I, so I want to, um, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier in terms of uh, us being free and so forth, right? Go to Matthew 17. I want to show you what Jesus the Christ said himself. By the way, according to the scriptures, you know Jesus Christ is a black man, right? Well, aesthetically, the way they describe him would indicate he was anything but a Caucasian. Okay, right. Right. Matthew 17. Uh, give me verse 24, 25, I believe. Yes, 24. Watch this. Watch what Jesus Christ said in terms of freedom and so forth. Watch. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 24. And when they were come to... Uh, Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? So the tribute were the tax collectors. They came to Peter, Christ's disciple, said, D Does your master, don't he pay taxes? What's going on here? He saith, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? So Simon is Peter. That's the same brother. Simon Peter. Read on. Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? He's asking the question, hey, Simon, to whom do the kings of the earth uh, have paid taxes to them, right? Read on. Of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, of strangers. Jesus saith unto, saith unto him, then are the children free. Christ said, then are the children free. So when you don't have to pay taxes anymore, to another people, then you're free. That's what Christ is saying here. At this time, they were, Christ himself was paying taxes to the Romans, okay? He, he asked Peter, to whom do you pay tribute of the earth? To, uh, well, to, to whom do they collect tribute? To their own people or to strangers? He said, to strangers. And then he said, then are the children free. So when we don't have to pay taxes as a people, bills and so forth, then we'll be truly free as a people. Yeah, one more question, this last question. So, yeah, Juneteenth, do you celebrate the 4th of July? No. Do not. Why not? Um, because independence for whom? It's a good question. Who is it for? Who was the independence for? Not me. Well, who? A lot of our people still celebrate. That's why I asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, independence, but at that time, it was independence for the white colon, like white folks that were here that came from England, Britain, all over Europe. Right. So at that time, it was for the white col the co uh, colonials. Who is it for today? Same people or is it for all people? You're at Juneteenth. You're making a statement just being here. I know, I know, I know. So what's your thought? Tell, go ahead. Be honest. It's just, it's just us talking. Yeah. I think it's still for those. I think it's still for the those same group of people that have, but it's morphed into this idea of like race and class. So July 4th and this idea of independence is still holds up for what it who was celebrated then and what it was for then. But again, it misses things like this. It misses, you know, black people, native people that were not free at that time and are still to arguably not free today. Do you believe in the Bible at all? I do. Can I show you a scripture real quick yeah. before we wrap up? But I got it, yeah. Because what you said, you made some key points. These points are actually in the Bible. Yeah. You talked about we're doing things. Like one, you like what's going on here. 
Like, this is a form of unity, so to speak. Yep, yep, yep. The Bible tells us to do that, but it doesn't tell us to just unify with everybody. It tells us a specific kind of people to unify. Watch this. Give me Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. This is the book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. So it tells us, gather together, you nation that's not wanted, not desired. It's like there's a people that no one likes. Who is that today? What people are the most despised people on earth? What? I don't think I want to say that. I'm you can say it. You can say it. Because I, I don't actually hold those feelings. I don't not, not your feelings personally. I'm talking about you look at the grand scheme of the world. Who are the people the most afflicted, suffering to this very day? and have had the greatest uh, uh, catastrophes happen to them on the coast years. Nothing personal. Black people, African people. Right, so the Bible is talking about there's a people, a nation. Black people. If you're a nation and, like you said, say it again. Black and brown people. Right, you said, you talk about natives, like the Hispanics and Native Americans, right? Yeah. Those are all the same people yeah. in the Bible. They're that nation, which the Bible calls them Israelites, before we were called African Americans, before we were called Hispanics. Those, enabled, those names came from colonizers. They came from Jesse Jackson. But God called us Israelites before he ever called us those names. You ever heard that? Yeah. I've yeah, heard that. Yes. Do you agree with that? Um, I'm learning about it. Good, good, good. You're learning about it. So as Israelites, the Bible commands us, come together, you nation that's not wanted. Because everybody's not going to help you. Give me Lamentations 2.14 real quick. Real quick. And I appreciate your time, sis. I appreciate your time. So Lamentations chapter 2.14. Dealing with the holidays we deal with today. Like the 4th of July is one of many holidays set up by our, our colonize our oppressor. It's like Thanksgiving. Like Thanksgiving. Do you celebrate Thanksgiving? No. Well, no. So I would say I sell So that would be a lie. I celebrate Thanksgiving, but I think of it as a thanks to my family. So, so you, it's the same day, though. Same day. But you just. You, I get do, work that day. <laughs> do you, are y'all still turkeying up and. Yeah, turkeying up, hamming it up. So you're still keeping things. Collard greens it up. <laughs> green bean, collard greens, all that. Yeah. So you're still basically keeping Thanksgiving, but you. Yeah. What, what about Easter? Um, Easter, yes. Is it? My, mother, my grandmother was a mother of the church, so I always celebrated Easter. You believe in Easter? As a holiday, remember, it's not in the Bible to do Easter. I don't know if you know that. But do you, I think it, I personally believe in Easter, yes. How about Christmas? Um, depends on what you define as Christmas, so what exactly? What's are we talking about like Santa Claus? Because I'm like, are there any children around here? Oh, no. Or are we talking about like... Come on. Is, is Christmas... In the Bible to do it. Oh no! You say no. No. So do you celebrate Christmas? Yes. <laughs> you see, so the Bible says don't do it. I'll, I'll, we'll show you the scripture. Give me Jeremiah chapter ten. Yeah. I'm gonna show you the scripture. We're gonna back it up. The book of Jeremiah chapter ten and verse one. Now this we're talking about Christmas, but we're also talking about Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, Labor Day, or whatever date has been thrown at us. Read. Hear ye the word. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So God speak. He always spoke in His Bible to the children of Israel. That's the Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans today. Read. Thus saith the Lord: Learn not the way of the heathen. God says, Do not learn the way of the other nations round about you, that don't believe in Me. Don't learn their ways, their customs. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. It goes into your astrological signs. They've been praying the stars for years. He said, don't do that. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. A custom is like a what? A custom. I mean, it's a way of life. It's what you do. Right. Is it like a tradition or a holiday, right? Yeah. Come on. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Of these vain customs, there's one where you cut a tree out of the woods. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold and fasten it with nails and with hammers. So, let's stop. I want you to look into the scripture. What tree have we always used and we've decked it with silver and with gold? What tree is that? The Christmas tree. That's the Christmas tree? Yeah. What did the Bible say to do with it? Um, what did the Bible say to do in regards to that? Read verse 2 to her. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So what did God say? Not me. Not my opinion or his brother. What did God say to do with that custom? That's what I'm missing. I'm sorry, y'all. Learn not. Wait, no, no, no. Do you read it? For the cuss, I don't, for, where is it at? Right here. Learn not the way of the heathen, be not dismayed at the sign of the heavens, for the heavens are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain, a tree out of the forest, for one cut the works of the hands of the workmen with the axe, but they fasten it with nails on the hammer, does that? So what is, what is the Most High God saying? 
not to do that? He's saying not to do that. So now the choice is personal. I know what I'm going to do. He knows what he's going to do. What are you going to do about it? I'll probably think about it. You're going to think about it. That's good. Think about it. Consider what God says. That's all we are here to do. Let's show people what God said. Now go to Lamentations. This last scripture we'll give to you. I will say I do have to leave. This is the last so one. Sorry, hey, I appreciate your time. Thank you. This is the last one. Lamentations 2 and 14. Book of Lamentations, chapter 2 and verse 14. Huh? Thy prophets, thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Vain goes into being lies. Foolish, you know what foolish is. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. Remember you talked about we see the symptoms, but we don't see the, the, the main cause. God's saying, your prophets, your spiritual leaders, they've seen dumb things and foolish things for you, lies. They never figured out why you went into slavery in the first place. Your iniquity, your sin. Read. To turn away thy captivity. See, to turn away your slavery. But have seen for thee false burdens. they seen for us what? False burdens Read. and causes of banishment. What's a false burden? What's a false burden we're doing today? But burden is something hard to do. What's a false burden we're doing today if our prophets have taught us vain things like Christmas and Easter? Those are not in the Bible to do. So what are those false burdens? The false burdens are Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, holidays, but we spend all our money, right? It's burdensome for Christmas. You are saving up money all year to buy those children presents. And we lie to those children and say there's a, a, a white man coming down the chimney and we have to maintain the lie, right? You were just doing this. Any 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 children around? Why? Yeah, because I don't want to ruin anything, any hopes that they have. But, the, but God describes that as a false burden, and it's not the cause of our banishment. It's not why we went into captivity. It's because we haven't been keeping God's laws as a people. But say, say your name to the people one more time. Uh, Ebony. Ebony, thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Shalom, everybody. It's a, you. it's a great learning opportunity. I'm just here to listen. Okay. All praises, all praises. All right, shalom, y'all. Most high Christ bless. Shalom, Israel. IUIC Cuts from the Streets, Raleigh edition. Uh, we are here with Miguel. Miguel. Where are you from, Miguel? I'm from North New Jersey. Okay, we're from New Jersey out here, all right? So we out here. Uh, I'm looking around. Uh, what are our people out here for? Uh, you know, a couple people out here just to be part of the festival. Uh, enjoying the, the good city life. Uh, this is very different. I'm not even from here, so this is like a whole new vibe. Uh, I think it's a church festival going around, so, you know, it's a lot happening. Uh, shout out to the 973, though. All right, all right. So, all praises. So, we out here. I got a couple questions, like two or three questions. Uh, first question is, uh, do you know anything about slavery? Yeah, I know a lot about slavery, actually. So, uh, slavery um, came go all the way back to, like, 1400s. Christopher Columbus came here, conquered the massive genocide to the Taino people originally. And then we have um, slave rebellions that happened, like Toussaint Louverture in Haiti. So, I know a lot about slavery. Hey, hey, sound very educated. So, my next question. Uh, today, even though we can get our own businesses and things like that, uh, do you think we're free? Um, well, I think that all goes in a way, like, you define freedom. So freedom is defined in different, many different ways for different people. So if you define freedom basically as being accepting and being able to start something on your own, or if you define freedom as basically I'm able to do stuff myself, then I would say we're free in that sense. But like in trying to create stuff for our own people, I don't think we're free. Okay, okay, I like that answer. So, so we can't leave the country without a, 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 a passport, right? So we have to get it from the same people that you said conquered us in the 1400s. Do you agree? Yes. All right. So next question, uh, one of my last questions. Uh, do you know what Juneteenth is about? Um, Juneteenth is about basically the awakening of African Americans. So in the South, there was a lot of slavery still happening. And Northerners that were already free, like African Americans that were already free in the North, came down to the South and told them that, oh, you guys are no longer slaves. Because slave masters were still trying to keep them as slaves and basically keep them mentally oppressed. So they came down and said, nah, 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 I don't know what all this is, but you're already free. It was like, all right, that's good. Cool. Okay, okay. Hey, hey, the brother's very educated, Israel. So now, uh, you said you believe in the Bible, right? Uh, office, uh, 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 Captain, may, may I get you uh, to bring out a scripture? So now we're going to show you in the Bible if we're actually free. Can you meet Baruch 3? So we're going to go into, can you go to this side? So we're going to go into the King James Bible, all right? And we're going to show you, according to the scripture, what God says if we're free or not, all right? All right, this is the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. It says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So the Bible's saying we are yet this day in 2019 in our captivity, read. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Uh -huh. So the curses that you read in Deuteronomy 28 chapter, we were going over it over there, all right? Those curses fell upon God's people. And to be subject to payments. So you think today, are we subject to payments? I would think so. 
Do we have to pay taxes? Yeah, of course. All right, so we if we supposedly own a car and we don't pay our taxes, what happens to our car? Car gets repossessed. All right, so it's not technically ours. Do you agree? Yeah. All right, so we're according to the scripture, let's finish it out. And to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. So the Bible is saying that our forefathers departed from God. So God allowed a certain people to come to this side of the world and conquer us. Now watch this. Can you get Deuteronomy 28 and 49? Now I'm going to show you. You brought it out. You said Christopher Columbus came to this side of the world, right? Let's see if the Bible says that. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. Do you agree that Christopher Columbus came from that side of the world, right? Yes. All right. As swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So did they have an eagle as a flag, and did we not speak Spanish? We did. All right. Did we speak Spanish or we didn't speak? We did at first. All right. So they taught us Spanish. Yes. So the Bible's saying we didn't understand their language, and they had an eagle as their flag, right? Read. Verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shall favor to the young. So the Bible is saying that the, the, the conquistadors, they killed our old men and our young children. Do you agree that that happened in history? Yeah, massive genocide. All right. So the Bible is prophesying that that happened to God's people. So that means you, according to your history that you have in your mind, you're one of God's people. Now, we went in over, you're Ephraim, Puerto Rican. That's, uh, that's the so-called... Um, uh, Port of Riches, right? Taino Indians. Those are the Ephraimites in the Bible. We're going to go to verse 48. Now, this is going to show us that we're not, in, uh, we're not free again, all right? It's another verse. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So who sent Christopher Columbus, according to that scripture? Enemies. Uh, who sent them? Uh, the verse, first part. Watch this. Read it again. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So who sent the enemies? The Lord. All right. So we, he sent them because we broke his commandments. All right. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. So for food and water, Aquafina, PWC, who do we serve today? Lord. Huh? Lord. Now what nation of people do we get those resources from? Oh, America. Which is? U.S. Is that the slave masters from the past? Is that their, their children? It is. All right, so we still serve the same people that conquered us. Do you agree? Yes. All right, watch this. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Now that want means lack of. and lack of anything, you have to go to the same people that conquered us. So for a birth certificate, who do you have to go to? People who made it. All right, so people who, who conquered us, right? What about a death, death certificate? Gotta go to the people who conquered us again. What about religion? Same thing. What do they say that Christ, uh, Jesus Christ looked like? They say he was white. What does the Bible say? They say he wasn't white. So what color was he in the Bible? Black. All right, so you know that. So this is the type of things that it says we're gonna want. We're gonna want uh, anything that we lack, we're gonna go to our enemies, read. And in one of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. Do you agree that they had a yoke of iron, physical slavery, until 1865 when they uh, uh, emancipation proclamation? Do you believe that that happened historically? Yes. So the Bible's prophesying that they weren't going to take the chains off until we were mentally destroyed. When you look at our people today and you can talk to an African-American and they say they're Negro, they're Afro-American, they're Egyptologists, they have different nationalities. Do you agree that that is a state of being mentally destroyed? Destroy? I would think so because like the way I look at it we're all black so okay. we all come from the same origin and same type of people that's like diversity amongst unity one divisive against one another we don't realize that we have to come together as a group to be able to advance in anything out here and um, no we are we're definitely in my opinion we're actually moving in a backwards direction and that's heavy what you said there Absolutely. that's heavy what you said so what about this what's your outlook on like, well, let me ask, do you celebrate July 4th? I wouldn't say I celebrate it. We typically do some cookout food, but I wouldn't say I'm celebrating it per se. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, do you, what is your outlook on those who do celebrate it? Confusion. That's what I look at it as. Basically, people don't understand what they're actually celebrating. Uh, just like the Star Spangled Banner. We need to be able to look 
beyond the surface of things. As black people, we tend to just go with things that are shiny instead of understanding that there's always truth be beneath that surface and we need to take the time to do our research and understand that. Okay, yeah, hey, you said a lot of good points. I'm gonna ask uh, one more good question, well, maybe two. Okay. Um, so you see that our people, we have a high rate in going towards jails and prisons and sisters on welfare and whatever. Um, but you see, you see the atrocities done amongst us. What's a, a good way of uh, fixing this? What's a solution? One, we need to understand economic stability. Uh, we need to understand that the way the world is created, money moves things, but it has to be a collaborative economic effort. Uh, you got to understand the meaning of Ujamaa and make that actually work. Uh, we, we get so caught up in, like I said, we get caught up in the shiny things that are just out there for distractions and not realizing that they're only using that to keep us confused, to keep us fooled, whereas if we collectively pull our dollars together, utilize the tools that are out here uh, for our own benefit instead of just basically flipping it back over to the other side, I feel like that in itself, unity bottom line, is what we need. Now, I, I love the last answer that you had just said right there. Unity. Absolutely. Unity is good. Now, if you don't mind, uh, I want to use the Bible for a second. Okay. If you don't mind if I pull the scripture or two. Okay. All right. Hey, my man, come here real quick. Now, you said unity. Yeah, I agree 100% with you. Give me uh, Zephaniah 2 and 1. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yay, gather together, O nation not desired. Right, and it said, O nation not desired. Do you know who that nation is? Say it one more time. You know who that nation is? I can't say I know specifically what nation is being referred to there, no. Okay, well, it says, O nation not desired. That nation is God's people. God's people will be the Israelites. As, as, you know, as uh, the flyers that we have brought out, so on and so forth. It says, we have to gather together. Read on uh, verse 2. Verse 2, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. So now all that's talking about is before judgment happens, we have to gather together as a people. Correct. That's what it means. Hey, quick question. What's your name again? Hananiah. Hananiah. Okay, Josiah. You mentioned earlier about this. It, it represents what again? It's a representation of God walking with man. And it's to remind us that he's always with us and always guiding us to come back in, back into his way, to be in his perfect peace. Okay, so more or less a symbolic representation of God. I know you mentioned um, comfort and so forth, right? It's, it's not, a, not a representation of God, but a connection. It's, it's to remind me that, you know, that we, we, that we always have that connection with God, that relationship with him, you know, and... It's just, it's basically, it's to put it in simpler terms, he said, thy rod and thy staff shall comfort thee. And, and, and sometimes when we get weak, we forget, we need to remember. And we need certain things to remind ourselves, like the fringes, you know what I mean? Like, like certain things, you know, to remind us of our culture. And it's just my way of trying to step into our culture, you know what I mean? Okay. Now, he mentioned um, rod and comfort, right? The rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Give me uh, Psalms 119, verse 49 and 50, and I want uh, Romans 15 and 4 as well. Psalms 119, verse 49. Watch this. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 49. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. It says remember what? Remember the word unto thy servant. It says, remember the word, right? Remember the word, read on. Upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort. This is what? This is my comfort in my affliction. So now, what is the true comfort in our affliction according to God? The true comfort, say that again. I'm asking you, what is the true comfort? According to what we just read, these two verses, what is the true comfort? The word. The word of God, right? Now, one more. I'm going to show you one more. Romans 15 and 4. Watch this. Read. This is the book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever thing were written aforetime were written for our learning. Now, things that are written aforetime was written for our learning, right? Read on. That we, through patience and comfort, 
of the scriptures might have hope. It says comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. That's why, that's why the same thing David said, it says, this is my comfort. You see what I'm saying? So Deuteronomy 7 to 6, for example. This is my comfort in a time of affliction. So, yes, you can have a, a physical representation of what you may feel the most I was speaking about, but we got to have the true understanding of what God says here, right? I, I want to I also add that this is actually a physical comfort for me as well because I do have problems walking sometimes. And I do a lot of walking, and I try not to... I, get, I hear a lot of people saying things like, Oh, a wizard or something trying to attain, put, at, attach power to it. And I, I say, no, I live, give all the glory to God. It's not for me to try to, you know, be haunty or get into how the world might view it. So they, they view it as some sort of wizardry or witchcraft or so forth? Well, they, well, they take it to, to think that I'm putting all my faith and my trust in it. But it's my way of remind. I give the glory back to God, regardless of how you know, whatever forces might want to change how you feel, how you see your relationship with God, I just give it back to God. You know what I mean? Okay, so Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Now, we read that the scriptures are supposed to be our comfort, right? In time of affliction and so forth. Watch this right here, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You, hear what they, you, see, you see what he said right here? We are above all people upon the face of the earth. That would comfort our people. Let's say you had on a shirt that, that represented the scripture, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, and telling them they are above all people on, on, upon the face of the earth, right? That would be some sort of comfort unto them, right? Yes. Right, that's why the scripture says, this is our comfort right here. Now, give me 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, last one, um, 22, I believe. Does, does it not say that in the Bible that um, thy rod and thy staff shall comfort thee? He said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. It's the reminder also that God is with me. You know, I, I, according to how I understand, that, understand the Bible, no, 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 it's I, a personal reminder for me. You know what I mean? Maybe not a legitimate, you know what I mean? The, this is how everyone's, you know, should do. I understand that. I understand that. But the reason why I read... I just want to make sure that, that scripture was correct. What, what scripture was that? Uh, it's the book of Psalms chapter 23. It's that, that whole chapter. That whole chapter. Psalms 23. Yeah, that whole chapter goes into that. But uh, read this, and then I want you to get Isaiah 28 about precept upon precept. This is the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You hear what the Bible says? So what does that mean for you? It says abstain from all appearance of evil, meaning you shouldn't let your good be evil spoken of. That's what it's really saying. So how, how would you abstain from all appearance of evil? Concerning this right here, I'm just asking. Well, concerning this, I don't see any evil in having... It, but it says appearance. Yeah. Abstain from the appearance of evil, right? Go ahead. Well... For example, when we, when we start to come into our culture, when we start to come into our culture, and when we start to do according to all that is written in this book, the, you will have people who will point fingers and say that your good is evil. And those are the hate, the people who hate God, or the ones who are going to say that everything you're doing is, is, is evil. And so it's not so much as saying that what you're doing uh, by, by keeping the commandments and showing forth your culture, you know, that's not necessarily evil. But through the eyes of people who, who hate you, who, who are not trying to show love, they will want to break your spirit and call everything that you do evil because why? They're against not you, but they're against God. Is that, is that correct, brother? Okay, I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. But remember, uh, the true comfort is what? What's the true comfort? The, the word. The word. Now I'm gonna show you why. Um, why I went to those particular scriptures? Because when you read in Psalms 23, it does it does say that thy rod and thy staff it comforts me, right? Read. Watch this. I'm gonna show you. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. 
line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now, what he's explaining is how you get the true understanding of what you read according to the Bible. He asks, whom shall he teach knowledge or whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Read it again for him. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's how you get the true understanding of what the Bible is talking about. It says line upon line, here a little and there a little. So when you read, for example, it says, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Now you have to find out, well, what's true comfort? That's why I took you to another scripture that shows you that says, thy word comforts me. You know what I'm saying? The rod without the word is void. You know what I mean? Because God. Well, is, this is, the, the point is, this is the rod. Yes, yes, the rod of correction. Yes. <laughs> which is, which is his, it's, which that's, that means that's his laws, right? Expose something right there. So the, the, the rod of correction is the Bible, is the word of God. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. So, and, and so what would the staff be? It's the same thing, same thing. The rod and the staff is the same thing. Because think about it, a rod, a rod is a staff. It's the same thing. So that's the laws of God. So for example, you should have fringes on your garments. That's correction, it's a rod, it's, it's striking you, it's correcting you, it's saying, hey brother, put fringes on your clothes. You see what I'm saying? Brother, keep the Sabbath day. Don't celebrate Juneteenth and so forth. You understand what I'm saying? Leviticus 23 says, th those are his feasts that we should keep in Leviticus chapter 23. That's correcting us. That's the rod and correction. It's the same thing. See what I'm saying? Okay, brother. Well, hey, you got in. You got one thing I want to uh, add, seeing, seeing that we look like we're about to close, is uh, it did say, make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord. And I just want to end it with all us making a joyful noise. Can we can we do that? Hey, go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna let you have it. All right. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes. All praise to the Most High. What's your name again, brother? Adonai. Adonai. Okay, Josiah. Good to meet you. All right. Have a good one, brother. Appreciate you. It's crazy how we came here on ships and they ain't sent us back yet. Let's go, Israel, I'm ready to dip But we ain't even packed yet They say this is the land of freedom But I ain't free and I ain't dumb We still in our captivity, yeah We still in our captivity I'm so tired, I just wanna lie down They don't, don't want us to find out I know that they don't wanna see us running Oh well, uh, they gon' have to take what's coming They set up all these other nations around us Just to confound us Oh na na, I know that They just tryna wait but the time's up Yeah, the time's up I die just to save my own life I die just to see my whole nation make it the Messiah said he's on the way Came here as slaves So we the ones that's getting saved America's not a home Or a city, it's a company mm -hmm. yeah. And we were brought here as slaves Because of our iniquity It's crazy how we came here on ships And they ain't sent us back yet Let's go Israel, I'm ready to dip But we ain't even packed yet no, 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 no. They say this is the land of freedom But I ain't free and I ain't done I ain't that dumb. We still in our captivity yeah. We still in our captivity
hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.